Hi, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for what we hope will be an exciting, engaging, and interactive discussion of the Coursera, Coursera MOOC Emerging Technology, hashtag MTech MOOC, that was developed by a team at the State University of New York. And here today, we are joined by Robin Sullivan and Cherie Van Patten who will tell us a little bit more about the course, how it was developed, and why you might want to participate in it. And first, I'd like to just give you an overview of the Shindig platform, and thank Shindig for allowing us to use this as a way to engage with our community. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you'll, you'll see a symbol for a hand, and if you click on that, you can raise your hand and come up on stage. And we encourage you to do that if you have a question that you would like to ask. Or better yet, if you are a current participant in the course, it would be great if you came up on stage and shared a little bit about your story and what your experience has been so far. If you don't have the technology or you're not in a space that would avail you to be able to come up on stage, you can also click on the chat icon to simply uh, post a question and then the question will come up on the screen and we can answer it. We also encourage you to take advantage of the chat space to talk with some other people that are participating here today to learn a little bit and share with one another. So now I'd like to uh, talk with Robin a, a bit and thank you for joining us today, Robin. I was hoping you could tell us a little bit about your role at SUNY and how the MTech MOOC came about. Sure. Um, thank you, Reese, for organizing this uh, shindig event. and. Um, so just to give a little bit of background, um, the MTech MOOC, our formal name is Exploring Emerging Technologies for Lifelong Learning and Success. Um, for short, we call it EM Tech MOOC. And um, it is a learning opportunity that is housed in the Coursera MOOC platform. And um, it's hosted through the State University of New York. Um, the funding for the project initially came about through an innovative instruction technology grant. And um, the project is based on an earlier um, SUNY-wide effort that was uh, geared towards faculty and staff professional development. It was very successful for five years. And just um, recently, we have modified the project to uh, reach the goals of all learners. So students, professionals, um, staff, faculty, alumni, retirees, non-employed, whoever um, has an interest to learn about emerging technology tools is encouraged to participate. Uh, my role in SUNY, I am an online learning specialist and an instructional designer with the Center for Education, Center for Educational Innovation at the University at Buffalo, which is one of our one of the 64 SUNY campuses. That's great. Thanks, Robin. And uh, I should add that I am an instructional designer joining you here today from the sometimes sunny uh, Cornell University campus in Ithaca, New York. Uh, and I helped uh, a bit with the marketing and promotion of this MOOC. So Sherry, could you uh, tell us a little bit about your role in SUNY and um, in the MOOC? Okay, um, my name is Sheree and I'm here at um, Binghamton University. Is my sound okay? Okay, yeah. I just, Robin just gave me a look and, and it, sometimes that's when I sound like a chipmunk. So I just wanted to make sure. Um, I'm here as an instructional, instructional designer at Binghamton University and um, I also serve as assistant director to this um, MOOC project. And before this, I served at Tools of Engagement. I'm really interested in um, faculty development and just lifelong learning as a whole where people need to learn the tools that they're going to need in their toolbox to continue to to learn on their own throughout their um, careers and lives in general. That's great. And with that in mind, I was wondering if one of you could speak to what some of your goals were in the development of this MOOC and outcomes that participants could expect um, if they engage in the MOOC. 
Sure. Um, so the the aim of the project is for participants to uh, identify uh, the value and also the implications of using established and emerging technology tools. Um, the the um, process is meant to help somebody in their both their personal and their professional lives. And throughout the activities, um, we hope that participants will acquire strategies to develop lifelong learning habits. And um, the, you know, the idea is to keep pace with technology change. We all know that technology evolves rapidly. Something that might be available today could be gone tomorrow. And so um, as a person in today's technology-rich society, we need to be able to evolve with that change and we need to be a lifelong learner. So um, the, the course is meant to kind of uh, start out with a focus on lifelong learning. We have some resources um, that we share on, on gaining some strategies. And then once you gain those strategies and also some of the underlying concepts um, such as Creative Commons, um, uh, your digital footprint, uh, accessibility of technology tools, also growth mindset is very important um, in becoming a lifelong learner. Then you move on to f future modules that cover the topics that are focused on 21st century skills. So the future second, third week, and fourth week modules are communication and collaboration are together, um, creativity, and then uh, that's uh, kind of closed out with critical thinking. And um, in addition, um, somebody at the final, uh, throughout the entire MOOC, they develop a personal or a professional e-portfolio that they then share through the MOOC in a peer review process. So it's kind of that's the great. project. Show. Uh, so of course that inspired a lot of uh, a lot of questions. Uh, one of which is some people may see the term emerging technologies and think, well, this course isn't for me, or I probably don't have the skills needed to engage with emerging technologies. Could you talk a little bit about the you know you, you mentioned some of the activities, but more of the the skills or competencies a learner might need in order to effectively engage in the course. Sure. Um, so the MOOC is targeted to um, a broad range of learners. So we encourage anybody to enroll, whether or not, um, if you are very new to technologies, this will give you a comfort level to be able to um, pick up some technology tools to be able to communicate same way that somebody is very comfortable just picking up a pen and paper. Uh, in today's environment, you need to be able to pick up an image, share that image through email, or do a video chat similar to what we're doing now. These are just tools that people need um, on an everyday basis. But if you're somebody that already has technology skills um, or technology knowledge, you can come into the MOOC and it's very much of a discovery basis. So you can um, search for tools through the complimentary wiki that asks you to um, look through the resources that we've compiled and you can determine what is your personal objective for the particular module, find tools that you have not yet explored and explore them in relation to the activities. Um, if you've managed to somehow explore every single tool on the site and that's probably not, not doable because there's a lot there and everybody's continually adding to the site. Um, you're welcome to find a tool that does interest you, that is new and um, you can add it to the wiki. You can do your discovery activities based on the tools that meet your needs. So any, any level in between. You had mentioned faculty development and that got me thinking about uh, centers for teaching and whether they might be able to use this course in their own faculty development programs or to help teachers, for example, the you know, 21st century skills is something we hear about a lot. You know, could a faculty member pull some of the content from this MOOC and use it in their on-campus course? 
definitely be able to take content, like even if you just find things on the MTech wiki that you want to use in your course. And um, I could see structuring like a faculty learning community or some kind of almost like a reading group around these various activities. So maybe one month you would read things from communication and collaboration and go from there. And, and there's a lot of things that can tie into how you teach and also things that you can teach your students about the growth mindset as opposed to a fixed mindset and how to develop um, lifelong learning skills and learn on your own. Uh, with this, the students in mind, I was wondering if if there are any students that are here today, if they might like to come up on stage and share a story, or Robin or Cherie, if you have any examples of stories or experiences from students who have participated in the current running of the MOOC. I'd like to just kind of add on to what Cherie just said, um, and then give our participants an opportunity to think about maybe um, something that they'd like to share. We can bring you up on stage and talk um, whether or not you've participated in the MOOC. But to expand on the idea of um, can the um, EM Tech Wiki site be used separately from the MOOC in, um, or together with the MOOC in a, either a faculty professional development situation, um, it's also very useful for faculty to use with their students. And so we've tried to set up the site so that some of the activities are accessible right through the EM Tech website. And you can get to the site um, by clicking in that little widget in the bottom left corner that Chris has positioned for us. And um, so if you wanted to use it for faculty professional development, just like Cherie said, you can grab pieces from the MOOC or from the wiki itself without even having to log in. And we also hope that faculty will steer their students towards these activities and towards these resources so that they can uh, enhance their own 21st century skills and knowledge. So hopefully that gave everybody that's out there. I see um, one of the co-collaborators on the project who's listening in, um, a couple of them, and uh, it would be great to, we could pull someone up on stage. Um, you are welcome to just click that join podium button and um, you'll be up to, you know, to share some ideas. I see um, a couple of our students in the audience already. So as Robin said, you can simply click on the join podium or you can raise your hand and Chris will Chris will bring you up. Oh, and we have a taker, Jessica Kruger from Buffalo. Thanks, Hello. Jessica, for uh, being brave and coming up on stage to join us. Uh, could you share with us a little bit about your experience in the MOOC and your reasons for taking it? Sure, sure. So I'm actually a faculty member at University at Buffalo, and I'm someone who really loves technology, uh, but I'm always trying to find different ways to integrate it either into my classroom or as faculty development. And so this MOOC actually gave me an opportunity to explore so many different technologies that I haven't seen before. Um, and learn about them and use them. I actually was just telling someone the other day, I really love the digital profile. It's a great way to collect and put together your teaching portfolio, but also for students to keep the projects that they have and learn more about innovative ways to show and demonstrate um, information. Actually, in my class next semester, students will be using one of the technologies to make an infograph um, to demonstrate to patients um, or clients about different health education needs. So uh, I, I think it's a really great, fantastic um, opportunity for you to integrate it into your classrooms, whether it's a piece or the whole MOOC, getting your students uh, learning more. Although they seem to be very into technology, uh, they're always on their phones or computers, it gives them an opportunity to actually learn how to use some of these software, which is a valuable tool as they get out into the real world. Jessica, and I know uh, faculty time is very precious. And I was wondering if you could give us an idea of about how many hours a week you feel like you need to spend in the course to really you know, get what you need out of it. 
Uh, I think I spent about an hour and a half to two hours. And um, I, I actually spent some more time after the course looking through different content and clicking around because there's so much there. Um, it's a really valuable resource to pull from. And I continue to click back and look to say, oh, how can I use this? Or what are some different ways that I can incorporate this? Or what tool could I use to make my life a little bit easier? And one of the things I know I really enjoy when engaging in MOOCs is the community aspect and the opportunity to meet people at other universities and share and learn from one another. Could you talk a little bit about your experiences interacting with the community? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a wonderful it's, platform. Um, I've been able to meet people at University at Buffalo um, that I've met in person, not just online in the MOOC, uh, but able to share ideas, which I think is so important. Uh, we all work in our own microcosm, uh, but this allows us to be more interactive and work with others and learn from each other. Great, thanks. And Robin or Cherie, did you have anything you wanted to chime, ask her about? Um, no, I think, um, you know, Jessica was part of our pilot session. We had a pilot that ran, I think we started it in early January, just to kind of have a smaller group run through, um, you know, all the different pieces of the project and make sure that it was ready for prime time people. And, um, and then we've relaunched it again this past uh, March 12th. And so hopefully it became better because we tried to listen to the experiences of the original pilot participants. And just like any good teaching situation, we are continuing to learn. So we are continuing to try to take what we have and make it better. And um, the site that um, Jessica mentioned that she was um, able to go back after she was in the MOOC, the EM Tech Wiki site, um, that's wonderful to hear because that's what we really hope it to be. It's um, a great collection of tools, but the general public is able to go in and continue to add to that site. Um, there's also the ability to rate the tools. So somebody can say, this is a five star, I love Google Docs, but this uh, wiki tool thing, you know, this other site that was added is becoming out of date. So it could get a lower rating. And you can, the tools automatically show up with the high, most highest rated up at the top. It gives you just kind of three at a time um, to say, you know, these are the best and then these are the next best. And that site is only going to become really useful and really um, engaging to find tools by the um, crowdsourcing, by people adding to that, by people putting in their ratings. And so it's great to hear that it is something that's referred back to. The grassroots effort behind evaluating the tools. I know there are a lot of websites that evaluate tools, but we sometimes wonder who's sponsoring those websites or how those evaluations are coming about. So it's great to, to have an open source, an open source like that. Um, so I know, Robin, you just mentioned uh, the pilot and that it's running currently. And I know the next session is scheduled to start April 16th. Could you talk a little bit about the self-paced nature of the course and how that works? Um, so um, our second session is scheduled to start on April 16th. So the MOOC itself is five weeks long and uh, somebody would enroll in the MOOC and go through the different week modules. Um, you can spend, um, you know, I'd say as little as like half an hour to an hour, um, you know, getting the activities done. Um, but you can spend many more hours and sometimes the tools just kind of suck you in. You find one and then you find another one. Um, and so we have an activity in each one of the week modules. It's a discussion forum um, activity that you select one of the tools or the resources, provide a reflection in the discussion forum. And in week two, you start building a personal portfolio. You provide a link to your artifact there. Um, and that kind of goes through to the five weeks. Um, but if you happen to fall behind, 
that's understandable. We all have really busy lives. So, um, you know, there's going to be a continual um, cohort of um, sessions that launches every five weeks. So if you get through week three and you say, I'm really far behind, you can just jump into the next cohort that starts again in the five week mark. Um, if you get to four and three quarter weeks and you say, I'm not going to get to that deadline, you can, you know, just roll yourself into the next version. Um, and one thing that we didn't mention um, that um, we do offer digital badges as incentives for completing the different modules. And in addition, if you complete all five modules and participate in the peer review portfolio process, you earn a mastery badge um, that you can share on your CV, on your social networks. You can also earn a Coursera certificate so since this MOOC has been sponsored through SUNY, um, all SUNY participants are able to earn their Coursera certificate at no cost, as long as you sign up with your SUNY email. And anyone else throughout the world, we do have um, participants that are from different parts of the world. That's extremely interesting, and I hope to see that grow and grow. Um, participants from other parts of the world that are not part of SUNY are encouraged to participate. They can do everything, all the activities, all the feedback. That's not the case in some MOOCs, but you can participate in all of the activities um, except the one thing you, that you don't get for the free version is the Coursera um, printable certificate. And that's um, a hot commodity to put on a, a resume saying, I am certified through Coursera for these courses. Chris from SUNY is here. Chris, if you wanted to come up on stage and say a few words, could you just click on the podium? Uh, and while we're waiting to see if Chris comes up, um, I, Robin or Cherie, I was wondering if one of you could talk a little bit more about ePortfolios. I think some people might think, well, I don't really know what that is or why I should care. Okay, I can take this, Robin. Take this so, so basically, an ePortfolio is a way to have a digital representation of your work. So in the case of a portfolio, if you were a, like a graphic designer or an artist, you would have a portfolio of your work that shows that you can you have mastered different things required in your profession. And an e-portfolio is, is the same kind of thing. So what we like to do is have people, every time you do one of the modules, you will put like a representation of the fact that I did this as far, for my communication and collaboration project, or when it came to creativity, I worked on this, this item here. And um, I also teach um, an internship class through our Career Development Center. And there was a time when I was using those in my class as well, so that the students would have a, a representation of what they've done in college. And then they would also be able to include a resume and a cover letter, like a generic kind of cover letter, maybe more like a bio. And they could use it as a career artifact when they went out looking for employment after school. Um, and it's something that we're I'm considering uh, adding back into my program because I do think the students like to have that record when they leave college. Is there anything else you'd like to add, Robin? Um, our university um, just recently made the ePortfolio a requirement. So every student that comes in the door as a freshman at UB has to leave with an ePortfolio that shows their digital footprint, their professional persona. Um, and so it's something that is being um, you know, one of those emerging trends that is being more sought by employers as uh, people are looking for jobs. And it's a, it's a really important part for you to say who you are as compared to letting the rest of the world put little pieces up that you don't have the control over. You want to put your footprint out there. And thank you, Chris, for uh, joining us to round out the conversation as we near the end of our time. Could you tell us a little bit about your role at SUNY and why SUNY um, wants to offer a MOOC like this? What the, you know, what, what, why it's so important? Yeah, we've been involved for a while and I just think not to be too repetitive here, but what everybody's been saying, kind of we echo that. Um, I think that having this MOOC be open to uh, 
faculty, students, staff, really anyone that wants to learn how to be more sort of digitally literate, uh, comfortable using technology tools, uh, really made it appealing. I think the other thing is the mTech wiki is a great idea uh, because the tools change so frequently. So um, the evolution of what started out as the Tools of Engagement project into the mTech MOOC is, um, I think, makes a lot of sense. And, uh, and you know, it just, uh, I, again, I, I think um, everyone needs to be able to be comfortable online, finding the right tools to do what they need to do to communicate with other folks, to collaborate with other folks. And so it just makes all the sense in the world. So of course we'll be involved. Thanks, Chris. Uh, and Robin or Cherie, is there anything that you want to add, a last call to people before we uh, wrap up our session? Um, I just, uh, there's a question in the chat that um, I can address from uh, Caroline. And um, so she asked, um, what uh, platform does our university require students to use? And so right now our um, university is using the Digication platform. And that's also something that is in use at many of the SUNY campuses. And anybody that joins the EM Tech MOOC is uh, encouraged to request a free Digication account. So that's kind of a great offer that we've been able to make a partner with the Digication company. Um, so you can individually request an account. If you have an account through your institution, for example, if you are associated with UB or Stony Brook, which also uses Digication, you're encouraged to use your campus system. So that um, one of the things that's uh, limit in the, um, the MOOC is that support is through the community. So if you have an issue, you kind of ask your colleagues, uh, can somebody help me figure out how to change the permissions on my portfolio? Um, if you have uh, an account for a digication portfolio or any other type of portfolio or a blog or whatever you want to use, create a video. Um, if you use a system that's supported by your campus or by your organization, you're more likely to be able to use that um, support that might come with that benefit. I think um, you know, I don't, I, we're at our time, so I just want to um, say thank you, Patrice, for helping us to organize this event. Um, and thank you to everyone that um, took part and jumped up on the stage. And Shindig is a great platform. Thank you to Shindig for allowing us to host this event. And we um, didn't really take advantage of the sub conversations that can happen in Shindig, but so we'll maybe have to do this again. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Thanks, Robin. Thanks, Sheree. And don't forget to click on the MTech icon on the bottom of the screen if you would like to sign up and learn more. Thanks a lot, everyone. Great. Um, HTTP colon slash slash SUNY dot edu slash EMTech. So that's E-M-T-E-C-H. Hope to see you in the MOOC.